Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Channel 781 News Special Report. We have some updates for you on an issue we've discussed in our debrief show. That's the future of the farm, which is up for a vote at tonight's city council meeting. As you may know, Waltham Fields Community Farm is Waltham's only food producing farm. They contribute food to Healthy Waltham and other programs that address food insecurity, as well as offering a CSA and educational and recreational programs. They're a nonprofit organization that operates along with several other nonprofits at the former UMass Field Station, which was purchased by the city of Waltham earlier this year. The mayor has said that the city will be issuing a request for proposals for use of the land, and the current tenants will need to submit proposals and are not guaranteed a spot there. That uncertainty has caused some problems for the farm organization, which has missed out on some grant money because they don't have a permanent home. On December 15th, Mayor McCarthy asked city councilors to review a package of documents about the farm that included over 3,700 pages. Those documents were discussed at last week's committee of the whole meeting, and it was a little difficult to follow what the committee was being asked to approve. We now know they voted to close two entrances to the property and make about half the property inaccessible to tenants to allow for some environmental cleanup on the land. That would mean the farm would lose access to much of their facility, including their greenhouses, and it's not clear for how long. This morning, Stacy Daly, the executive director of Waltham Fields Community Farms, offered a tour of the property for residents concerned about the plan. She said she agrees the cleanup needs to happen, but it's not necessary to shut down the property to do it. As to what that restricted access entails, does it mean that we will not be able to park here? Does it mean that we will not be able to access our greenhouses, our learning gardens? Is this all in preparation for a phase two remediation, which we are happy to collaborate and cooperate if we should be awarded the RFP. And we fully understand that the learning garden needs to be shut down for any period of time because the city wants to remediate these long standing greenhouses and the gray building that was condemned many years ago by UMass and not dealt with. We understand that and we will work and we will work to collaborate if we have to postpone programs we have to think about them in a different way for a short period of time. But all of this is part of the reason that we are creating this call to action because as we know in, in the city of Alton, we need greater transparency about what the decisions are that are being made by our elected officials. And we are asking for that conversation. We are asking for a delay. We are not asking for a delay in the important things. We are asking for a delay so that we can have transparency and conversation so that we understand what Waltham Field needs to do to continue to provide services to our community. One area of the site was previously contaminated with fly ash from an old agricultural experiment, but Daly says that was cleaned up in 2009 and she has documentation of that. Another part of the site near Waverly Oaks Road contains garbage that people illegally dump there, but Daly believes a cleanup crew could access that part of the property without needing to shut down the farm. Daly emphasized that the farm would normally start buying seeds and selling farm shares in January, so this plan is a major crisis for them. The Committee of the Whole approved that plan, but it still needs a vote by the full council, and that's on the agenda by, for tonight's meeting. The farm's asking people to show up at the meeting to show support, although as far as we know, the meeting won't allow for public comments. They're also asking supporters to call in or email city councilors to ask them to vote no on this plan or to delay a vote. We'll be watching that meeting and hopefully we'll have some updates for you later this week. Reporters from WCAC and WBZ were also at the tour this morning, so we'll look forward to seeing their coverage as well. Thank you very much.